Well, for everybody on the call today, um, I want to thank you for taking some time to, to learn more about what Expresso is doing and how we're trying to help our, our YMCA partners utilize the Expresso platform to sort of rebuild and re-engage your members. Uh, today, we've got some really fantastic partners and panelists to, to hear their stories about what they're doing with their Expresso bikes. Um, but uh, what we'll do is we'll walk through this presentation. We'll leave some time at the end for, for questions and answers in your, in, your, um, in your box there. You should be able to pose some questions that we'll get to at the end. Uh, and we'll just go through and, and talk a little bit more about Expresso and our community building platforms. Um, before we do, I'll quickly introduce myself for those of you that might not know me. Uh, my name is Doug Currier. I'm the YMCA Experience Manager with Expresso. Um, I joined the Expresso team three years ago um, after a 14 year career with the YMCAs. Um, there was an opportunity to join Expresso to really help develop the YMCA market and really you know, blow up what the Y could do in terms of building community and, and, and member engagement with the bikes. And uh, I've been doing that with our YMCA partners for the last three years, helping them uh, maximize the benefits of the Expresso platform, fundraise, uh, and, and really build out some programs that I'll, I'll touch upon real quick here. Um, we'll hear from them in just a few minutes, but we also have Terry Wirtz from the Greater Toledo YMCA, as well as uh, Christine Regal from the Berwick Family YMCA in Pennsylvania. So we'll hear from them shortly, but that's, that's who you've got on tap today. Um, real quick, if there are folks on the call that aren't familiar with the Expresso bikes, um, we are a virtual uh, ex exercise bike, um, and it's a really diverse popu uh, you know, population that we can serve with our bikes. It's a really engaging product. We have both uprights and recumbent bikes that you know, kind of are geared towards a number of different riders. So uh, the versatility of our product allows us to run challenges and really engage the masses, the populations that the YMCAs are serving on a day-to-day -day basis. So our product has, has done a really good job at, at you know, building diversity, creating opportunities to engage all walks of life. So that's really just a quick touch point on how we can, how, what our product does and, and you know, the, the versatility of it. What we're known for is building communities through our products. Um, you know, this, this is an example. You know, what you're seeing on your screen here is, you know, just a, a group of riders. Expresso is sort of its own affinity group on the cardio floor at many YMCA's, uh, especially on the two branches that we'll hear from today. Um, and we've always done this. We've always had the ability to utilize the bikes uh, more so than just the cool video game bike on the cardio floor, where we use our programming platform to help wise promote, um, you know, promote both the bikes and build community around it. We do this with uh, predominantly through our monthly challenges. Many of our YMCA partners will utilize the online monthly challenges. Um, they'll go online. They can click into the website. They can pull up the stats, the leaderboards. Uh, on the newer bikes, the Go model bikes, this will populate directly from the bike, um, but you can also go online and, and track that down. The cool part about our challenges is they come fully equipped with a promotional kit. So if you click online, you go to expresso.com, click under challenges, and you can pull up the challenge of the month, um, and you can click into the promo kit, and you'll have access to uh, flyers, uh, posters, you know, online promotional materials, badges for social media. So uh, YMCA partners are, are, you know, traditionally using our monthly challenges to engage their members. They'll post leaderboards and they really celebrate their community use, utilizing uh, the monthly challenges that are always there for you to take advantage of. Um, on the heels of this call for everybody, you know, listening, um, you know, we'll get into some customizing uh, abilities, but in November, there's actually a miles per bike challenge coming up that sort of makes the playing field a little bit even for some of our Y partners that want to, that aren't fully open yet or aren't fully, you know, back. Um, you can utilize that challenge in November um, to help sort of build your community back up uh, and um, see where you stack up comparative to others. So monthly challenges is sort of a, <clears throat> a staple in terms of YMCA engagement. Next, I'm going to spend a little time myself before we hear from our presenters on, on what I've done to help, um, really maximize the bike's potential in the YMCA segments. And that comes down to customizing the program. So we've got a couple of examples here uh, that I'll hop into. First and foremost is super simple challenges to engage your members at times that make sense for whatever your promotions 
brands are. Um, whether it's around the holidays and creating custom, you know, calorie burn contests, you have the ability to customize the program and, and, and have your members take advantage of it. Um, we also do a lot in terms of customizing programs for chronic disease prevention, like Strong, uh, we can tailor our programming and target it towards user groups um, like uh, LiveStrong participants, like DPP, like Pedal for Parkinson's, and really augment these programs that you guys are having a day to day impact on. Um, you know, riders can, you know, one of the, the challenges with some of these programs is getting people to come in on their off days. And we've got some really awesome examples of, of Expresso's impact in, in getting people to stay connected to our product because it's fun, engaging, um, low, low balance. Um, a lot of the things that um, a lot of the challenges that we try to address um, with some of these unique uh, user groups. So our ability to customize program and help why support, you know, chronic disease prevention programs uh, is definitely something we take pride in, um, in terms of our ability to build community with our bikes. Um, so if you are on the call and interested in doing more with that, um, please reach out to me. Uh, again, we've had example after example of how we've done this with some of our Y partners, but certainly keep this in mind as you're thinking of creative ways to rebuild your communities, um, you know, as you, as your doors start to open and, and, and populate with, with riders again. Next, we're going to hear from Terry. Terry, are you there? I am. Terry, um, Terry joins us from the Greater Toledo YMCA, where they have a number of locations. But Terry's done a great job um, at building community at, at a couple of her locations. Uh, Terry, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and some of the challenges, you know, particularly your your COVID comeback ride that you've done uh, with Expresso. Um, I'm have been with the YMCA for 16 years. I'm the wellness director at the Wolf Creek YMCA, YMCA branch and also the Sylvania YMCA JCC. Um, we have always had a very strong community of bike riders here. And when we first reopened it, we only had probably between six and eight riders. So I reached out to Doug and said, you know, what can we come up with? And when he came up with the COVID comeback, and we reached out to some of our members, we emailed them, we called some of the writers we were more familiar with, and slowly but surely they started straggling back in and because they knew there was some kind of competition going on. And anytime you offer a free t-shirt, that's, that's gonna pull somebody in. So we ended up with the challenge, we ended up with 20, uh, 20 riders and they rode 804 miles and our top rider rode 288 miles. Awesome. So yeah. Terry, I'm going to click, I'm going to click into your leaderboard. Can you tell us a little bit, maybe not necessarily for this particular challenge, but tell me, I know the story, but tell some of our listeners, you've always had a leaderboard. What, what has that done to help you build community, posting these results and keeping people engaged? Well, we find, especially um, with some of our older members that used to be athletes and used to compete and, and didn't have an outlet for competition. So what this does is it creates a way for them to, to compete with the other riders and it gets them to ride the bike more and it gets them to stay on the bike longer. So it's just a, an outlet for them. Um, a lot of our riders are 50 and up and um, they really do like to compete against each other. They really do. So every day we update, we update how many calories have been burned this month and our ranking out of all the Espresso riders. And if we don't get it updated, they, somebody lets us know. <laughs> yeah, it definitely, I mean, these are small group communities and they definitely take on a, a, a mind of their own, which is, you know, in the wise goal of sort of building community and, and affinity groups, um, you guys have done a great job of making Espresso an affinity group for your why. Thank you. Um, Terry, you, you had mentioned it and I'll just, Kind of piggyback it, um, you know. Who doesn't love a free T-shirt? In in my experience as a as a as a YMCA director, we we always had closets full of you know T-shirts, bags, and and you know trinkets that we want to appreciate members with. So 
what YMCA's do, many of them, is they'll go into that closet and they'll utilize a challenge like a, a COVID comeback ride or even the monthly challenges, and they'll just recognize their riders. And it's a way to, to, to utilize something that you bought in the way of a T-shirt and a, and a backpack and use these challenges as a way to, to engage that population. And I, I know you guys are doing that consistently. And, uh, and thank you for doing so. I guess, Terry, if, if there was one bit of a device for someone on this call that might might have the Expresso bikes, but um, hasn't fully tapped into their community building potential, what, what would be your one bit of advice for someone that's kind of new to building with Expresso? Uh, my main advice would be to get your staff on board. Um, I offer incentives with my, we have fitness coaches and I offer incentives like whoever signs up the most members in a month, I give them a $25 gift card. It really is, it, this really is driven not by me, but by my staff. Um, every time we do a fitness orientation, we make sure we get them on the bike. Um, we've gone as far now as we, we get them on the bike and we set them up an account. People are intimidated sometimes about setting up another account. So we walk them through that now on how to do that. Um, Anybody, and I know everybody that works at a Y has heard cardio is so boring. So we say, all right, treadmill's boring, whatever's boring. We get you, we get them on a bike. We show them the trails, we show them the game, and that gets them connected to that bike. So awesome. get your staff, get your staff on board. That's the main thing. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much, Terry. We truly appreciate you uh, being here with us today and, and giving your, you know, you know, your peek, peek into your world with using Expresso to engage your members. Thank you. All right. Next, we're going to hear from uh, a legend in the game, the Chris Regal from the Berwick YMCA. Chris, are you with us? I'm here. Can you hear me? All right. Yep. We can hear you just fine. Chris, uh, Along the same lines, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your history um, with Espresso and, and a little bit about the challenge that we've got going for you. Absolutely. So this is my 17th year at the Berwick YMCA. Um, only five years as the wellness director, but 17 years total. And I want to kind of start off first with saying that we are a very, very small town. There's only 10,000 people in our town. There are three other gyms that are within a mile from the Y, and then there's a fourth one that's about two and a half miles away. There's a YMCA that's 20 minutes up the road with another town, and then the closest city, quote unquote, to us is about 40 miles away, and they have their own Y. So we, are, we have about 3,000 members. We're very small. So if that's something that you're thinking, well, I could never, you know, we can't do that. We're too small or whatever. Don't let that be de a deterrent to you because we were able to figure it out and we have um, a very small community. But uh, like I said, we were able to figure it out. So don't let that be a deterrent to you for sure. So Chris, uh, before we... Before we talk about your challenge that you're doing your ride for Arden, tell us yeah. about your, you mentioned your, the size of your Y being small, but you guys right. have a gigantic riding community. Tell us a little bit about what that looks like and how it came to be. Absolutely. So it started off, um, we had these six espresso bikes, which at the time I didn't know it, but that was quite a few. I found out later on in the rallies that there were some Ys that only had two or three. So that was helpful to have six of them. I have to say that for sure. Um, but one of the things that really helped out, like Terry said, was getting our staff involved. So a couple of the other directors and myself, uh, and of course, my husband also, who was an avid bike rider outside, we started to ride these bikes a lot and we started to get more interest in them. That was how then we were able to get some more members involved and they started loving the bikes and they were able to get more members involved. So it kind of snowballed after that, but it did definitely start with uh, the staff members for sure. Okay, so, so you have a, a small Y, a large riding community. Tell us about kind of what you wanted to do with this ride for Arden that we've got going for you. Yep, so one of the things I wanted to do when we were trying to get people back to our YMCA after we reopened um, still during the pandemic, uh, I was trying to think of how can we get people involved in something that would be fun, 
Uh, it would be enjoyable. Most anybody can do if you think about it. A lot of people can ride a bike, maybe not so much um, do things with a treadmill and elliptical and that sort of thing. But a bike is usually a very good option, especially if you've got the recumbent espresso bikes, which we don't have any of those, but I know they're a good option as well. So uh, unfortunately, we did have one of our longtime bike riders pass away uh, about three months ago. And so when I was looking at what kind of thing we could do, it, it made sense to do something in honor of him and something having to do with the espresso bikes. And he did uh, pass away from cancer. So to make it even better, we are doing it as a fundraiser for our Live Strong at the YMCA for our cancer survivors program. So and then the other thing I wanted to do is make a part of the challenge be that you can donate and still be a part and maybe not even come have to come and ride the bikes. So you could participate a couple different ways. Um, so that's why we have that donation way that you can participate. And then, of course, we have the challenges for set a goal mm -hmm. in the beginning. And if you meet or exceed your goal, you get enter entered into a separate drawing. And also prizes for the most miles for male and female that are ridden on the Expresso bikes. Awesome. So to, to sum it up, you're basically taking a community um, that you have at your YMCA and you're taking a program like Live Strong um, and you're marrying the two together to, to help support the program, which sounds a lot like what a lot of YMCAs typically like to do with their equipment is maximize it, maximize their community in, in hopes of growing programs, which is, you know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but that, that, that sounds you know, spot on with the whys or a lot of whys, big or small, are looking to do. Absolutely. And and you're having people work towards um, a common goal. Like that was huge when um, when I was trying to figure out how do we get people to come back and you know, why people, why members, why staff, that's something that they're, you know, in tune to anyway, is working towards a common goal that connects everybody together. So that is what the main goal was as well. Awesome. Uh, along the same lines, what's a what's a what's a piece of advice that you would give um, you know someone that hasn't done much community building with Expresso that might be thinking about you know prioritizing it? Yeah, um, I would say the same thing that Terry did. Um, get your staff involved. Get get some members involved as well besides the staff. Get them liking the bikes because they're going to talk about it. The more they, they get involved, they're going to talk about it with their friends. They're going to talk about it with other members. Members in your Y are going to see them riding those bikes. And 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 do plan some other things with your Expresso bikes. We did a, um, a triathlon. We did an indoor triathlon because we have a pool. So we did uh, 15 minutes um, on the treadmill, 10 minutes in the pool, and 20 minutes on the Expresso bikes. We had them ride uh, Fruitdale. So everybody rode Fruitdale for 20 minutes. And however however many miles they rode in that 20 minutes, that got marked down. However many laps in the pool they did in 10 minutes, that got marked down. And however many miles they did on the treadmill in, in 15 minutes, that got marked down. And that's what we based our, our uh, prizes and our divisions on and everything. So come up with some different things that would get even more people involved in in your why as opposed to just maybe somebody who likes to ride a bike. Exactly. And I think that's sort of the overall message with this webinar is thinking creatively about what you can do to utilize the Expresso bike. So whether it's a, a COVID comeback ride, whether it's a, a fundraising event, whether it's an indoor triathlon, there's a lot of ways that we can augment and support programs that are already going on in the YMCA. And I, I thank you for bringing up that uh, another example because it is, you know, part of um, what I love about my position is I get to work with Ys on any, you know, if you've seen one Y, you've seen one Y, you know, every Y is, is serving their communities in a unique way and they have different initiatives and, and programs that they're running. And, and I, I pride, I, I love the fact that I'm able to work uh, on so many diverse programs and impact communities. So right. please, you know, right. leverage me, let me help support support you with these programs but thank you so and much Chris. Fun. i appreciate the um yeah the other thing exactly. would be make, it, make it fun i would bring out the stereo you know during the rally if we were doing one of our overnight rides or one of our late night rides i'd bring the stereo out and put the ymca song on and we would do 
the YMCA dance, you know, on, on our bikes and, oh. and the rest of us standing around. And then you see that picture there of myself and my husband and my daughter. And we made those little signs and we had a, an archway with balloons and everybody that came up to ride, we took their picture. And so we just made it super fun and they loved that. Berwick definitely takes the expresso fun factor to the next level. You guys are awesome. So, all thank right. Well, thank you both. No problem. Um, I'm going to turn it back over. Um, I'm going to exit out of my screen here and go back to any questions that we might have. Um, see if any came in. Uh, I don't think any did come in. So um, I guess we'll, we'll leave it. Certainly, um, you know, here's my contact information on the screen here. Uh, so if any do come up, um, certainly feel free. Um, before we wrap up today, I did want to quickly touch base. Um, many of you on the call or many of you listening uh, are familiar with our rally. Obviously, Berwick is very familiar. Terry, you're familiar with it. Um, this is our biggest impact that we have on our YMCAs. Every year we do our annual fundraiser in February where we get our YMCAs to utilize the Espresso bikes, much like you know, Chris, you're doing with your Arden ride, we do this on a grand scale. And you can see the impact that we had on the, you know, 2019, uh, the 2020 campaign this past February. Um, so right now, we're, we're sort of um, talking about the 2021 event, um, we are going to be sending out a poll, uh, a survey to our YMCA partners to see um, if we need to maybe postpone it, if we if it's feasible to run it, um, or if we should go on as business as usual to make sure that we leverage this opportunity to help WISE um, do what they do on an annual basis. So um, we will be sending something out. Um, this is on our on our, you know, it's right on our horizon with it sneaking up in February. Uh, but be on the lookout if you're on this call or listening to this webinar on an email on your thoughts on how the rally can best support um, your community, uh, both uh, from a time standpoint and um, yeah, from a time standpoint. So uh, I, that's all I'll say about that. Um, with that, I just want to take uh, this last second and, and thank you, Terry, and thank you, Chris, for joining us. Um, it's a pleasure to hear your stories and, and know that you guys are, are shining examples of, of leveraging Expresso's community building platform. Uh, we certainly want to do more with some of your partner, uh, some of our partners on the call. Um, take advantage of the monthly challenges. February, um, the November challenge will be posted shortly. Print off the materials. You know, get yourself a leaderboard. Celebrate your members, and you know maximize these bikes for everything you can. So thank you, Terry. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate thank you your so time. Much for everything. Thank you. All right. All right. Take care, everybody, and God bless.